I mentioned earlier that my friend Pauline is here and she is all the way in Ecuador. So for her to be able to join us tonight is, is really pretty cool. Um, so let's get started. So as I was saying at the beginning of this, this painting here, just to give you a sense of scale, is 40 inches high by 60 inches wide. So it's fairly large. Um, the quote that you're seeing here, uh, there's a, a, an art organization in Philadelphia called In Liquid. And from time to time, they will write articles about their artist members. And Deborah Kostinovsky wrote this really beautiful article about my work. And sometimes other people have uh, an insight uh, into an artist's work that just really hits home. And so this quote really kind of encapsulates what my paintings um, are really about. And so I wanted to sort of share it with you so that as we go through the images, um, you can kind of keep it in mind because it's sort of what my main impulse is behind most of the work that I do. Um, so I'll read it to you. What can blast through the mundane and inspire the viewer to step through a portal into another world? And what if there were a way to package those spiritual feelings so that you are not just reimagining a memory, but actually able to experience those glimmers of light, color, and the feeling of the natural world every day from your own home? Therein lies the power of art. So that's kind of what I would like to keep uh, you, you to keep with you as you um, kind of listen to what I have to say tonight. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on a little tour of my studio. And we're going to take a quick. Hey, so we're going to start outside as if you were walking move to YouTube here down the path and heading to the entrance of my studio. This property was originally built in the late 18th century. The store building, the general store building, is where I have my studio. It was reconstructed in the early 1900s to be enlarged. It has been a general store, a barber shop, an artist's studio. And now it's where my studio is. So the little town that we're in is called Glendale, which is why I call my studio Glendale Art Studio. A lot of these little towns in Bucks County, which were simply crossroads with two or three houses, had names. So that was our town name. Down the street was the butcher. Next door was the wheelwright. Our home is where the general storekeeper lived. And then across the street was a farm. So if we walk along the porch here, you can imagine there used to be steps here where you could pull up on the dirt road, park your wagon, and enter the store. So nowadays, I use the downstairs of the store to show my work. And if you were to come here to uh, my open studio, this is where the work would be hanging for you to see. So we'll talk later on about what some of these paintings are about. But for now, I would just love for you to imagine that you were here. And hopefully I can give you a look at these pieces in such a way as to give you the experience as if you were actually standing here with me, which I would love. So hopefully one day, all of you can come here and see me here in the studio. This does help you to get some uh, idea of the scale of things. So for instance, the small pieces on the left in a row are 10 by 10 and the one next to it's 30 by 40. The little teeny tiny pieces are the ones I just love to do on the porch at the lake in the summertime. So we'll talk a little bit more about the porch at the lake later on. But as we walk around, you can sort of take a look at some of the different size paintings that I have. On the bottom is 36 by 48 is winter at the lake in that piece. On the top, 12 by 48 across the top there is spring. And coming in closer, these are the works on tin. And again, we'll talk about those a little bit later and I can tell you about how they're made. But they uh, are 12 by 14. But with you out the window across the street to the farm, moving around to see more works on tin. 
walking to a sunrise or sunset. This piece is 36 by 36. I'll show you this one later as well as an example of a piece that was done as a part of a series. And a couple of the more pieces on 10 here. This piece is one of my more abstract paintings. There's a line drawn across the top that differentiates between the top landscape and the bottom, which is much more abstract. And there is a lot of pencil actually in this drawing. I love to draw. And so bringing drawing into these paintings really makes perfect sense for me. So when you get close or if you're here in person, it's something you can see more easily that there's quite a bit of drawing in these paintings. And then dropping down to these smaller pieces. Again, these are pieces that I do at the lake when we're there. And these are out of oil pastel. So these are very small four by four. Coming across here, I'll give you the full view of everything so you can kind of get a sense of, of scale. It's also really a beautiful building, has a really cool vibe. My husband says it's haunted. <clears throat> he won't come out here at night by himself. Small fact. These are from the Cathedral series. Again, I'll tell you about these a little bit later. This is one of my favorite paintings. I love the light. And again, this is one it's great to see in person because when you get really close, you can see the brush strokes, which are these little rectangular shaped dashes that come across this piece. And it's got a really beautiful sense of light. So if I put it down on the table here, this is a really cool thing to be involved with. Last summer, MasterCard Black has a magazine that they put out and they put a, an artist on the cover and they chose my work for that. So that was a really neat thing to be involved in and a great team of people to work with. And this piece is actually still available. I'll try not to make you dizzy as I take you back over to it, over there on the wall. So I have a magazine that goes with that painting, if anybody's interested. Uh, coming back around here, so here on the floor, some more oil pastels slightly larger at five by seven. Coming around here, another very dramatic painting with lots of those little brush strokes in it. And again, this piece has to be seen in person to be true. That's the bug I think getting in close here. Backing up, currently the largest size I'm working is 60 by 72. As you can see, my ceilings aren't terribly high. So if I wanna work larger than that, I need to be outside. This is one of my favorite pieces as well. When you stand in front of this piece, it's nearly as tall as I am. So it makes you feel as if you're actually outdoors in this landscape. Surprisingly, this is a very small wall. I can touch the ceiling of this building with my hand. And this painting to me doesn't look too big here. It's a really cool piece to have hanging has an amazing presence and it really brings you outside when you're inside, which is a really neat experience. So I think it's a great painting and I don't think anyone should ever be intimidated by owning a large piece. This is a triptych, a three part panel. And then these, this is a scene that I can't get enough of. So I've painted three paintings one of which is hanging in someone's collection. These two are still available. So there, that is the showing space of my studio. And I hope you have enjoyed seeing it. So I'm gonna take you upstairs now. Watch your head. It's an old building, lots of creeks and groans and so-called ghosts coming up the stairs. This is my view when I work 
And again, I feel very lucky to have it. And here is my workplace. Take you in because there's some cool paintings on the back wall over here that I would love for you to see. Again, drawing is featuring pretty prominently, mostly in the horizon of these pieces. This piece is 40 by 60. And if you come in very close here, and again, imagine you're a person and you're really getting in close to this piece, and there's no guard to tell you not to, you can see the drawing that's happening in this. And the same with this one. Lots of drawing, lots of abstraction. And in this particular piece, lots of depth. It just pulls you right, right into the middle of it right there where all that drawing is. So I am gonna leave you with this piece and we will gather again. And I will start to tell you a little bit about the inspiration for these paintings. I'm trying to okay, so we're going to start outside as okay, if you we were go. walking down the path. Keep out of that. Okay, sorry, that was not smooth. Okay, coming back. So that was a tour of my studio. And, uh, whoops, come back here. Present. Okay, perfect. Back to where we started. All right. So I wanted to sort of first take you on a tour through where I work and what the work looks like actually sort of in person, although you're not actually here in person. And um, sort of start with talking a little bit about some of the people in my life that helped me make all this possible. So these are pictures of people. Um, this is my husband here, Alex, my son, Sam, my daughter, Ellie, my stepson, Alex. and. Um, and our extended family. When Alex and I met, he told me he had three plus children. Turns out he has four children. So we have six kids in our family. We have Carlin, who is about to make us grandparents. Uh, she is due to give birth to their first child in June. And there's Alex and Nick and Chris and my son Sam and my daughter Ellie, all of us at our wedding in front of our chicken run. Um, the other couple of people I kind of want to just give a shout out to are my gallerist, Candida Clayton, who's up here. Um, she's showing my work up in the New England area and I have a solo show opening with her starting tomorrow actually. And over here is Bridget Mayer. She is my business mentor who is encouraging me as I grow my career and my art practice. And uh, so I just wanted to say that, you know, I don't do this alone. I do this with the support of a lot of other people. Um, and actually including all of you because all of your support means a ton to me. One of the things that features really prominently in my work is the lake. Um, my family a number of years ago bought a lake property and um, it is up near Lake George and you're looking here at a porch, the porch where I sit and paint. Um, for some of you who are friends with me on Facebook, you're going to see a lot of pictures of my husband that my husband posts of happy hour on the porch. But this is where in this little rocking chair here that I sit and do my small pieces that you saw in the video and also the oil pastel um, drawings. And then down here is a really cool old postcard of the house. Um, the house was built and owned in the um, 19th century by a man by the name of Gustavus Rogers. He was an entertainment lawyer for the early speakeasy movies. So he was quite a character and the stories are told about him driving his Rolls Royce up the dirt roads, through the ruts, to the lake with a trunk full of steaks that he would then take down to the lake and grill lakeside. So the house has a lot of history, has a lot of memories and it is one of the places where uh, when I am there, I feel as though my whole, the, everything is fine and everything is happy and peaceful and serene and it is my place. And it is where the imagery for most of my paintings comes from. So including this one right behind me here. So we'll get to that in just a minute. 
Um, hang on. So here's a picture uh, and you see it behind you in real life. It's fairly large. It's 30 by 40 inches. Um, it is taken from a photograph. Uh, this is on the lake in the evening. We go out in the evening on, in a boat at night and a lot of other people do too. So what you see here is the remains of a boat wake. And the thing that's cool about the boat wakes is that they move the water in such a way as to create this beautiful tapestry of light reflected from the sky. And um, you know, kayaks do it to some extent, but these boats really do it more than that. And anyway, so we were out one night and I took this picture and it inspired this painting, which I created later in the studio. So a similar situation here, I'm out on the lake, but this time I'm in a kayak. So it's much quieter. Um, and the difference here is that, you know, sometimes when I'm working from a photograph, I'm a little bit more true to the photograph, but other times I really try to capture uh, the moment as it felt to me at the time. And so while I was out on the lake at this time, the thing that was really captivating me was the red and orange tones of the sunset. They just were getting right inside my head, my visual field. And so when I got home, this photograph inspired this painting, which has got more of the reds and the oranges. They're kind of exaggerated and um, heightened because that to me got across the feeling that I had in that place really effectively. This piece here is uh, about 24 by 36 inches. So again, it's a similar size to this one that's here behind me. One of the things I kind of wanted to share with you really briefly, and these are very random photographs that I pulled up to, to share, um, is how I actually came to be a painter. Um, I grew up in Carversville, which similar to the Glendale that I showed you, it's a small town in Bucks County. Uh, 18th century, early, um, lots of stone houses, a couple of stone mills. Bucks County has always been the home to um, a lot of artists. And when I was living in Carversville as a little kid, uh, there were a couple of sculptors, a couple of painters. Um, it was just a common thing that people, my parents knew had a, a career as an artist. And one of the painters that I was exposed to as a, as a young person was Charles Ward. So this piece here is one of his. Um, the reason I saw his work was because my piano teacher, Anna Ward, um, lived right across the street from us. And so I would walk across as a little kid in elementary school, take piano lessons. And all throughout Anna's house were her late husband Charles's paintings. And I would sit and just stare at these paintings while I would wait for my piano lesson. And then there was one right in front of the piano. So he was an expressionist painter and, um, a really interesting character. And then the other painter in my life was my mother. Um, this piece here is hers. And it is a painting actually of Carversville, which is why I chose it to show you. And this little house right there under the blue dot is where I grew up. Um, so that was another influence. So I left uh, home to go to college thinking I wanted to be a doctor, not an artist. And I got to Duke University to study biology and about a year into my biology program, I took an art history class and that was pretty much the end of pre-med for me. I worked with a professor who taught Dutch and Flemish art. And this is one of the paintings that just captivated me in his class. And that was it. Four years later, I had an art history degree. I was not pre-med anymore. And uh, one of the things that really cemented it for me was going to Florence, Italy to see Renaissance paintings. And while I was there, uh, our professors were able to get us up on the scaffolding where a uh, Masaccio painting, this one here, Expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, was being restored. So I was this far away from this fresco being restored um, on a scaffolding. It was just an amazing life altering experience. So I have been painting ever since then and exhibiting my work first locally and now more nationally. And as I mentioned earlier with uh, Candida Clayton Gallery up in New England. So she has a show opening of my work tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. So the work um, roughly kind of divides into three categories uh, and they overlap quite a bit, but um, I'll talk to you about each one of them separately. Far Horizon, Through the Trees and the Color of Air. So they're slightly different. 
um, Far Horizon is really simply straightforward. It's a lot of these paintings are about this horizon line. It's about the tranquility and calm that gets created by this horizontal that we all as human beings are so used to looking at in the landscape that kind of keeps everything even. Um, sometimes it's in the middle of the painting, sometimes it's in the bottom, sometimes it moves to the top, but it's nearly always there. And it kind of acts as a balance point between what's happening in the sky and what's happening in the water beneath it. So a lot of these paintings that are about the horizon, I've been incorporating some drawing into. So these are uh, oil on canvas with graphite. And I'm using the lines to, again, accentuate the horizon, but then also to create sort of that perspective feeling that draws the viewer right back into the piece. This painting, by the way, is uh, 40 inches wide by 30 inches high, just to give you a sense of the, the scale. So I showed you this piece when we were out in the studio. Um, it's big. It's 60 by 72. I love it. I love this size because when you stand in front of this painting, you feel like you're in the landscape. So it's one of my favorite sizes to paint. Um, surprisingly, these paintings don't look huge when you bring them into your home, as long as you don't have as long as you have an, enough of a wall to handle them. Um, and you saw in my studio that even though the ceilings are low, it, it's still pretty cool. Another one is this one, which is slightly different in the sense that there is this line that I have drawn across the landscape here. And up here is sort of a fairly traditional landscape in the sense that draws you in with the atmospheric perspective and the hills and the clouds. But then as you come forward, you feel as though you're kind of on top of this lake with mist and a sort of surface sensation. But then when you're standing in front of it, you can almost look through the water. So it gives you almost three different paintings in one piece. And so there's a little bit of abstraction happening there. I showed you this piece on the right in the studio tour. These two pieces are 36 inches square. And I uh, share them as an example of when I work in a, a series where paintings are meant to sort of relate to each other, one to the other. Similar with these two pieces, these were actually seasonal. Uh, there's a spring, a uh, summer, fall and winter piece that uh, work with these. So this is summer, this is spring. And then um, fall is in a collection in California and winter is in a collection in Philadelphia. These are 30 by 40 inches as well. This I painted just because I wanted to go to Bermuda. And here it is, the pink sands of Bermuda. This is a 30 inch square piece. And uh, again, using the horizon line and the perspective to draw you right back into it as if you could take a walk right down that beach. This piece, these two pieces are 15 or 17 by 15. They're gouache uh, and graphite on paper. And again, utilizing the horizon line, but they're a much more quiet palette and um, sort of more trying to evoke a sense of the evening quiet on the lake. These two examples I chose to share with you how sometimes drawings lead to larger paintings. So not necessarily that the drawing is a study because the drawing is really a piece in and of itself, but I create them, hang them on the wall. And then one day I just sit and think, oh, that would make a really great big painting. So this piece, that is gouache and graphite on paper. It's five by seven, little guy. This piece on the right, which is in Candida's show opening tomorrow is um, much larger. That's 36 by 48. So you can sort of get a sense of how a drawing might lead to a painting. So the next, uh, kind of body of work is, um, I call it through the trees. And there are a couple of different materials that I use when I work in this um, area. And I kind of wanted to share with you the first, the first material that um, was on my list, oil on acid etch tin is a little bit unusual. And it's kind of interesting historically for me to share that with you. So my mom um, is a Colonial, she was trained to do colonial lighting, which is which was traditionally made out of tin. Um, she decided she wanted to learn how to do this when she was, you know, when I was a little kid. 
She searched all around Bucks County. And of course she came across somebody who made reproduction colonial lighting. And this is him right here, Charles Schmaltz. So Charlie was like a grandpa to me growing up. And this is my mom. She apprenticed with him in his studio. She just went, he taught her everything that she, he knew. And she went on to, uh, you know, create a metal shop for herself and sell her work. So he was a, just a great person. And um, this piece here is a copy of a historic piece that's in the Winter Tour Museum that they created a pattern for and um, would, would recreate as a reproduction piece for people. And there's Charlie, that's a little bit better picture of him and my mom. And that's a piece that, they, that she created. So these paintings are made on the same material that Charlie and my mom worked with, which is tin, which starts out shiny. And then there are a number of different metal working pieces of equipment that we use to create what I what panels. And then the panels are, uh, I use a, a paintbrush and um, acid, nitric acid in a special combination that my mom knows how to do. And I wash them with the acid. The acid gets sealed and then I paint oil paint over top. So that's just a cool little historic fact about where these pieces come from. And here's one of them. So this piece is 14 by 12. So again, a small painting. And what you'll notice about these pieces is that uh, you will almost always see through the paint, uh, the acid, the watery acid etching that's left behind. It looks like raindrops or water just kind of cascading down the surface of the piece. Um, I rub the trees through the paint as I create the painting. So these pieces are somewhat more abstract than some of my other work. Here's another one. One of my favorite views on the lake is to stand on the lakeside and kind of look up the lake and across. The other material that uh, I use for the through the trees pieces is oil pastel. I love oil pastels. Um, these are pieces that I do on the porch at the lake. They're small and uh, this is five by seven. And um, I like to push really expressive color with these and often they'll lead to larger paintings. Although again, you know, they're really experiences in and of themselves, um, not intended to be created into larger paintings. It just sometimes happens that that's where they go. And here's another one. So this is Moonlight. Um, I did actually sit out there at night Another small piece. These are a little bit larger. Uh, this series I created because I was, um, one, one of the things that I call lakeside with the trees is my cathedral. Where that comes from is my idea that through all of the different nooks and crannies and shapes that these trees form by the side of the lake, the light kind of filters through them, the color filters through them, the water filters through them. And they feel to me like stained glass in a cathedral. So that is why they're entitled Cathedral. Um, I did a whole series of these pieces that are in this kind of tall panel shape. This is a triptych, um, 36 by 36. And then this is two other pieces that I have still from this series. And again, I came back to Deborah's quote because she did just, I mean, such an amazing job uh, describing the piece on the left, um, Cathedral Series Golden Fall Light focuses on the bare minimum color and shapes to hint at the painting subject matter of a tree bathed in autumnal light. It's more a study of the light and the overall impression than a painting of a single tree. So that, again, she just did such a beautiful job um, capturing the sense of what these paintings are about. And you did, I think, see both of these pieces when we did a quick tour of the studio. So the last um, sort of body of work is uh, called The Color of Air on the Water. And that is just the combination of words that I came up with to describe how the clouds and the light and the texture of the uh, land on the horizon and the water and all of it kind of blends together into this kind of effect, which I'm calling the color of air on the water. And a lot of these, um, you'll see a lot of marks, uh, a lot of gestural marks, whether they're oil pastel or oil paint. Um, these three were done on the porch again, they're four by four, lots of little marks. 
And you can see where the overlap of the three body of work happens because there's almost always a horizon peeking through somewhere in the piece, somewhere. This one is slightly larger at five by seven. So again, there's a bit of the horizon happening in here, but a lot of dissolving. The light just kind of dissolves the land. This piece is an oil painting. Um, like the piece on the lake where I pulled the really red and orange lights out of the sky, this was about the incredible pink that happens at sunset on the lake. So there's a lot of other colors happening that I could be describing, but the one that really hits me at certain times is this incredible pink. It just bathes everything. And so that's why I really pushed that color in this piece. This one is 20 by 24 to give you a sense of scale. Um, one of the interesting um, things you can ask an artist is uh, what, what pieces of your bodies of work do you keep for yourself? Um, as an artist with two kids, one in college, one about to be in college, I keep very little for myself. I'm happy to pay tuition. So, um, but occasionally uh, a painting speaks to me so much so that I need to kind of keep it. So this piece is called Balance, which is something that's really important to me. Uh, the balance of the horizon, the balance of kind of keeping life in balance. And so I kept this painting and decided to make a print of it um, so I could still share it. So I made a print and I kept the print to the same size as the painting. Um, and I think it came out really nicely. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. So the last thing I wanna share with you guys tonight is um, every now and then my collectors will send me pictures of their work hanging in their homes. And when they do that, it makes me really happy because um, I get to see where they get to see their work. And um, in this circumstance, the collector sent this to me and I just, I was blown away by how beautiful it looked on this blue wall. Like, where did you get that blue paint? That is beautiful. It's just like the painting's cool. I'm like, yeah, but look at that blue paint. Anyway, so I think this looks really gorgeous on this wall. This piece is 30 by 48. Um, Here's a kitchen. That uh, painting was hung across from the kitchen island here. Um, this family has a home on uh, Lake Sacandaga, which is in the lower Adirondack Mountains. And so uh, the imagery of the Adirondacks was speaking to them and they placed that painting in their home. Would be awesome to have a bathroom like this to be able to hang a 20 by 60 inch painting over top of the bathtub. This piece I included because I just wanted to share with you the um, idea of commissions. I have a couple of commissions I'm working on now that are not of my lake, but they are of the water that the people who are commissioning the paintings love. So one of my clients is commissioning a painting uh, from the view of from her porch from her Canadian lake house. And another collector is commissioning a painting from um, Cape Cod from the porch of her new house. So I'm excited to kind of interpret the love, their love of their water spot. And um, in this case, the collector uh, had seen this middle piece, which I had already created, which is 48 by 60 inches and loved it, but wanted it bigger. So we decided that the best way to do that rather than create a big long painting was to create two wings. So these two pieces were created after the fact and added to this piece in the middle. So this is 24 by 48. So that was a really cool solution. And um, I think it's a really interesting piece. This piece you saw the series from earlier, you saw the summer and the spring, this is the fall. Um, this gentleman is an interior designer and he creates his designs around the painting. So he buys the painting and then creates the design around it, which I was incredibly flattered that he, um, that he collected this piece. He had found my work through the luxury magazine um, that I showed you earlier and discovered that we were actually neighbors like within five miles. So he came by the studio and we've had a really great time selecting work for his California house. 